Ladies and gentlemen, Street Fighter 6 reviews are out. Here's some of the early review scores. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5, 9.5 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. And those aren't just little indie places. Those are big and small, all reviewing it that way. Okay? In fact, it is the highest reviewed fighting game in 15 years. Yes. The last game that even tracked to rate this high was Street Fighter 4. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Now you might say, why? Well, when you read these reviews from the professional game journalism sites, you have to take them with a grain of salt, okay? Here's why you have to take them with a grain of salt. Those people aren't professional players. There's zero pro Street Fighter players who are journalists at IGN or GameSpot or any of these sites, you understand? So they're always approaching it from a casual perspective. So when I read things like, oh, I love the new drive system because drive impact is good for this and drive cancel is good for this and drive reversal is good for this, and I'm like... Yeah, but if you read your reviews of Street Fighter V, you loved the V-Trigger system. And truth be told, the V-Trigger system was atrociously bad and unbalanced. And everyone competitively did not like it after playing it for some time. But you guys kissed its ass back in Street Fighter V days and said it was great in your reviews. <clears throat> so, when you're reading the competitive aspect of what they're trying to say in these reviews, I really don't believe a, a word of it. To me... There's absolutely no way to tell how competitively good Street Fighter VI will be until that game is out and people are playing it and it's in the wild for at least a few weeks and people are starting to see matchups and strategies online. We get to see truly how good the netcode is. We get to see how it holds up with the crossplay. We get to see what's dominant, what's not. There's no way to judge until then. So all that nonsense, there's entire giant segments of these reviews about the competitive nature of the game. These guys don't know diddly dick. They might as well just skip it and say we, we're not saying nothing because this is worthless. Okay. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> excuse me. However, what I do judge as useful information in these reviews are the things that we wanted to know about the game that we did not have answers for, but now we will have answers for them. Okay. Question number one When you're going to play this game online, there's a battle hub. What is there to do in battle hub? All right. Well, you, when you're waiting for your matches online, there's a million things to do. You can sit down at one of these arcade machines and you can actually play the full game of Final Fight. And you can also play Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. But apparently it's been confirmed. This is offline only. There is no online play or co-op, at least in the versions that the journalists were provided. There's no online play. Because it was funny, some people were like, oh, there could be a big revival of Super Turbo if there's an online mode where you can play it against people online. Why would they have online Super Turbo in Street Fighter VI? It's a different game. Wouldn't they just charge for that? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I wasn't expecting that. A lot of people were speculating. Even I saw, like, Alex Valle was posting up last year, oh, maybe Super Turbo will be online. No, no, no. They would never do that. They would always charge for that, right? Or maybe if they do, it'll be DLC to pay for later. Right now, it's just offline, okay? Maybe in the future, but now it's not in there, all right? But there is tons of content in there. There's these games to play. There's these things you can do. And, of course, the things that, that they're saying is the best feature, taking your avatar from the single player and actually playing it online against other people. And people are like, it's completely unbalanced. It's not meant to be competitive. It's just silly fun. But it's actually fun to take your character you built yourself in the story mode and try to fight people with it online. There's no formal ranking. It's not going to be for tournaments. But it's going to be a fun, silly mode, okay? That's kind of neat. Um, now, in regards to the single-player World Tour mode, this was the mode that I had the most questions about because I outright said Street Fighter VI looks like a game that was developed differently from Street Fighter V. From the ground up, they wanted to make a game that appeals to all players, whether you're a hardcore competitive player or a casual player, whether you're going to be going to tournaments or whether you're just going to be playing this at home by yourself or maybe a hybrid where you'll do some online play. They really wanted to make this game appeal to everyone and have value. That's exactly how you should approach a game like this. That's what NetherRealm has been doing with the Mortal Kombat and Injustice series for the last decade. That's the way to go. That's the consumer-friendly way. So, when you take a look at Street Fighter VI's World Tour mode, we finally have answers. You ready for this? So, 20 hours long minimum. Yes, the World Tour mode is 20 plus hours long. 
if you take your time to grind and get all the abilities, it's even longer. Or if you just play the streamlined story, it's 20 hours. Wow. That's cool. I wasn't expecting a 20-hour story mode from a fighting game ever. Ever. Like I said, the closest we could even give that would be Soul Calibur from back in the day on the Dreamcast had an incredibly similar premise where you created a character, and as you played through the game, you earned special moves. It's same kind of thing you're doing in this World Tour mode, but even that, I think, was like maybe 8 to 10 hours. This one's 20 hours minimum, okay? Now, admittedly, the reviewers are being honest. They're like, the story of this World Tour mode is not great. You basically are given silly tasks to do, and you go around doing them, and they don't really make a lot of logical sense. So, for example, one of the, the story missions is this. Oh, I've always wanted souvenirs from, I don't know, Italy. So you fly to Italy, and you beat people up in the streets, and eventually you fight like a gang leader or whatever. At the end, you earn souvenirs that you bring back. It's like, if you wanted a souvenir from Italy, why didn't you just buy something online at like Amazon? Like, why did you fly to Italy to beat people up? So the story actually does not make much sense. It's just silly. The story is just meant to be like a nonsensical story. But some of the best praise I'm actually seeing about the mode is that people are like, it's Street Fighter plus Yakuza. You're running through the streets, you're fighting random enemies, you're doing silly challenges and leveling up. <clears throat> it's not meant to be taken seriously in any way. It's more silly fun. And if you're okay with that, if you like Yakuza, you're probably really going to like the story mode of this game. Also, there's 18 characters to interact with. And each one, you have to do some tasks and things, and you earn their special moves. However, there are two major criticisms I'm seeing of the story mode. The first criticism is that it basically takes way too long to master a character. So what does that mean? Let's say you run into E-Honda, and E-Honda says, I want to teach you the ways of the sumo. So here's a series of tasks. So he gives you the tasks. Okay, great. You go do the level one challenges and you'll learn a few special moves or whatever. But basically, the more that you do tasks for E-Honda, the more you level up those abilities. And if you master them, now you're like way powerful with these abilities. But apparently, from what I'm to understand, it takes a ton of time to level these up. The, the guy, one of the reviewers that I read, I think it was the IGN review, he said, so I played the story mode for 20 hours and I basically stuck with Ken and um, Luke's abilities, those were his favorite abilities. So he stuck with those two trainers and tried to level those up the whole game. He says, by the end of the game, and he had mostly stuck with those abilities, he didn't master either. 20 hours of gameplay, he hadn't even mastered those abilities. So he's like, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, if you play through the game, you'll want to casually probably be swapping between the styles to get new special moves, which is great, but you'll never, ever feel, like, overpowered because it takes very, very long to master. But here's the thing. If you're someone who actually really likes this mode, maybe you'll get immersed in it. Maybe you'll enjoy the grind, and you'll want to keep going because you always feel more powerful when you get to the next level of this move or whatever, and therefore you'll get hooked on it. So there's potential. There might be people who do not give a crap about online competitive play of Street Fighter, but will buy Street Fighter VI and play it for its World Tour mode and love it. And then maybe once you really massively level up your character, your avatar, now you take them online to the random, you know, player matches or whatever, and you see how your avatar stacks up against others that people have made after doing the World Tour mode. And the thing is, the more you play World Tour, the better you'll do on online mode because your character has leveled up further, you see? <clears throat> so... It seems like a mix. Like, to me, that sounds good. The other major criticism, again, is that basically the story doesn't really matter. The, the, the story is just a means to, for a reason to do this stuff. But they're like, yeah, you're never going to feel meaningful. It's not like you're taking down Shadaloo or it's not like you're doing anything crazy. You're just kind of going through the world doing silly things. And as long as you're okay with that, you know, you should enjoy the game. But take it more as a not a super serious playthrough, not a super serious campaign, you'll probably enjoy it, but some people were looking for something more. They are like, it's not like the story mode of Street Fighter V that had a serious narrative. This doesn't have that at all. It's more just kind of a mess around mode. Okay? 